Ready to All right. Dig out. So, uh, welcome to this uh, special meeting of the Sunderland School Committee, uh, February 10th, 2016, in case anybody is watching this later uh, in the week or month or whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, the, and the purpose of this is, as you know, to um, discuss our FY 2017 budget. So. Correct. Um, with that said, you can pass it to I will me pass and pass the baton. And <laughs> so, um, thank you everyone for coming. Um, we're glad to have so much interest. Um, we wanted to invite the select board and finance and any other interested members to this meeting because the next meeting we have is when we're invited to appear before the selectmen. And the school committee would not see the revision until after the select board meeting. Um, I have to say, before Patty goes through the details, this budget is what I consider the perfect storm. Um, and in that, I mean you are the only school district in our, our only school within our school district that has a growing population. You have increased your students by about 32 since last June. Everyone else is on the decline. Um, so it's necessitated adding a classroom teacher and everything that goes along with it, which are additional sections of PE um, right now. Um, I cannot honestly tell you if the population that you, the growth that you're seeing is something that's going to continue. Um, when we did the NESDEC study, it showed everyone else in a decline, including Sunderland. Sunderland sort of held their own for a while. Um, but the fact that you've seen such a jump leads me to believe that A, you're doing an excellent job because most of your students who were out have come back. That bubble that we lost about seven years ago because of the budget um, decreases that we had to do, those students who have choiced out, um, they're back. Not only that, your, your town seems to be growing. When we did a study of uh, where people were moving into, some people asked the question, are they all moving into more transitory housing? Is it just uh, apartments, things where people might be there for a shorter amount of time? And that's not really true. It seems to be 50-50 um, purchasing housing and doing rental properties. So having said that, um, there are a number of other things that we're going to talk about, including the charter and choice concerns that we have as a district and statewide and how it's affecting us. And something that's a bit of an anomaly to Sunderland is the required um, net school spending. Um, and Patty can explain the financial details of it later. We do have copies of the budget, and I don't think we had enough, but hopefully you can share. And she's going to walk you through, through this. It is complicated, but Patty does a very good job of, of making it um, as understandable as possible. <clears throat> so with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, just to rewind the clock, we were here last time and we were looking at an increase of 7.88% in our budget. And we decided that we needed to go back to the drawing board and try to get that percentage down. So that's why we scheduled this meeting. In the meantime, a couple things have happened. So not only are we not decreasing our budget from 7.88, but we're increasing it to about 10.18%. And the reason this has to happen is because of the net school spending requirement that's set by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Each year, we fill out an end of the year report and Part of that is called the Schedule 19, which we forecast our next year's budget, which would be FY16. When that report was submitted in October, we were in compliance with net school spending for both 15 and 16. But then the December numbers came in for Charter and Choice. In June, we had 18 students out on Choice and four out in Charter for a total of 22 students. When the December enrollments came in to the Department of Elementary Education, 
we now have eight students in school choice and none in chart. <coughs> so if we're down 14 students. Because those choice and charter students cost the district about 40 something thousand dollars, we no longer meet our required net school spending in <coughs> FY16 to the tune of $25,591. So I had a conversation with Jay Sullivan, who's the head of the finance department at uh, the Department of Elementary and Education. And I asked him, do we need to go back to the town to get that money appropriated? He said, no, you can just roll it into 17. So now when we look at our numbers for 17, we have to do two things. The requested budget that we made at the 7.88% is $24,021 lower than the net school spending. Plus, we have to add back the $25,591, so we have to, we have to add $49,000 to the budget that we were looking at at 7.88%. Can we stop for just a second? Sure. It may be helpful for people to understand what net school spending is, if you want to just give a brief explanation to the audience. Net school spending is the amount that we get in Chapter 78 plus the minimum, the minimum required contribution from the town. The minimum contribution for the town is based on a formula of equalized property value plus community wealth. And that's set by a formula. And I have added the, those pages into our budget. So why don't we look at page one of 17. And this is, what, this is from the governor's budget that was released um, at the end of January. So the, <clears throat> the process of how all the formulas work starts with the foundation budget. And that's based on our foundation enrollment of our October 1st census of the prior year. So right now, our foundation budget is set at 1,863,761. If you go to page two of 17, this is where we see the differences. So the foundation budget was set as a target for everyone to get to net school spending. And this was for all 360 something communities, school districts in the Commonwealth. And we've been doing this since 1993. So once you're, there's, there's people that are above foundation and there's people that's at foundation. I don't believe there's anyone under foundation at this point. So we take our chapter 78 from the prior year, which was 845, 663. And we only qualify for a minimum $20 per pupil. So that adds $3,620. So our chapter 78 for this year is 849,283. Now we have to add that to our minimum contribution, which is on page three of 17. And this is what gets complicated. This is the calculation that's trying to get all communities in the Commonwealth to pay their, what the state <coughs> considers their fair share. So there's, tar there's targets, and we're trying to get to these certain targets, and no one is supposed to spend over a certain amount. So if you look on the left, this is the effort towards that goal. So the equalized property value for Sunderland is 351627700 So the local effort from property wealth at the percentage that they set, 37.92, comes out to a million three 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 two eighty three. Then they take from the Department of Revenue anyone who filed an income tax return with the zip code of Sunderland, and they get that data. So the, in 2013, because these only get refreshed every two to five years, the reported income for Sunderland was $90,956,000. So you take that percentage and you come up to 1337. So then you take the two numbers and you get number seven, 2,670,404.
So the foundation budget in FY17 is the $3,362,204. <coughs> you take 82.5% of row 8, which is 27738119, and our target local contribution would be the lesser of 7 or 9. And the lesser is 7, which is the combined effort yield. So right now, Sunderland, is the local share is targeted to be 79.42 and the age share is 20.58. So when we look over to the right now, we're looking at the increments towards the goal. So the in 16, the required contribution was 2,728,964. The growth factor is 2.49%. So that gives us a preliminary contribution of 2,796,915, and that's at 83.19%. So right now we're in excess of our local effort by 126,511. So they reduced that excess by 70%, or 88,558. And so that the local contribution, which is line 15 minus line 18, and they cap it at 90% of the foundation, or 2,708,357. I know that's very complicated. <clears throat> now, if you look at page 4 of 17, that's Sunderland's entire minimum contribution. But it needs to be shared between three sources, the Sunderland Elementary School, the Frontier Regional School, of which they're a member, and the Franklin County Tech School, of which they're a member. So for the Sunderland, the, the part of the um, minimum required that is applied to Sunderland Elementary is 1,501,316. So if you back that up to page two, you'll see that number in the FY17 column on the right, and you add that to the Chapter 78, and we get a required net school spending of 2,350,559. So if you go to page five, I've sort of tried to make it a little simpler here. The required district contribution is 1,501,316. We add our chapter 78 at 849,283 to get that number, the required net school spending, 2,350,599. Now, we have to add to that number the shortfall from this year, which is 25,591. So our adjusted net school spending is 2,376,190. The budget that we looked at, draft one, number one, we requested 2,326,587. So we have a shortfall in net school spending of $49,603. So now if we look at page 6 of 17, we can go through what is going to comprise the $219,590 difference from last year's budget. So we do not at this point have a negotiated contract with our teachers or our IAAs, but we do have steps that we have to um, honor, and those will total $10,479. We have uh, teachers who have applied for degree changes, and that would be 3,323. We have a new um, person that has just earned their lo first longevity for $250. We need to increase our physical education, and that'll be a cost of 10875 We're increasing two instructional assistants. That one was not funded um, because they came on after the budget, uh, the budget process, and now we moved one with this additional funding off of school choice for a total of forty-five thousand ninety-two. We need to increase um, our staffing for a first grade teacher because we only have we have two kindergartens and one first grade, so we need a second first grade teacher, and we're <clears throat> budgeting fifty-four thousand three seventy-seven. We also have an increase for insurances. The insurance for the, what affects Sunderland Elementary's budget is the piece of the central office insurance. And that was an increase of 6.8% on average. Plus we have some retirement payouts 
and we do have some money in here for a negotiated contract, but we're not allowed to talk about that. Um, so those combined come to $42,732. We also are increasing our sub rate from $65 a day to $75 a day, and that'll add $4,525 to the budget. Other operational increases is we need um, in instructional services for our SPED students it needs to be increased a thousand. We would like to in, um, update our literacy closets uh, in the amount of $5,000. We're in need of science and social study genres <coughs> in our libraries. We would like to add uh, two more, two, one or two classrooms with Chromebooks, which would cost us $19,012. Summer Instructional Services, $18,000. This has been funded by a grant, and it's because we have the Horizons program with us now, they, that's an all-year program. And the grant um, uh, funded that for, the, for two years, but now we're over our allocation, so we need to take that money back uh, into our budget. The uh, increase in the central office percentage Sunderland was at 2167, they're up to 2495, so that's going to add $5,550. We needed to increase our maintenance accounts by $875. And the one decrease we have is we are going to decrease our legal fees by $1,500. So that's how we get to the 219590. The next pages, 7 of 17 through um, <coughs> 15 are the summaries of the detail lines that we just summarized. And then page 16 of 17 is our other funding sources. <clears throat> and I, I want to pay particular attention to this because this is, this is going to be, this is concerning for next year, but it's more concerning in 18. So we have always spent our school choice money a year in arrear. Next year, well, let me back up. Because we've been trying to keep our, our request to the town low, we've been putting more and more money on school choice. But our school choice money has been decreasing because we've, we're only getting 5,000. We're not getting kids with sped increments. So next year, in order, to make, we're gonna be in the negative 114,000 at the end of this year. Sherry, that's not a negative cash balance because we spend a year in arrear, so. <laughs> but that means we're only gonna have half of the 253, 559, which we're projecting. But we have payroll of 382,932. So next year, we're gonna have to take all of the 16 income and spend the 17 income to make that payroll. Which means in fiscal year 18, we're probably going to get another 250,000, but we have $382,000 worth of payroll. So that money has to come off the school choice and be put back on our town request budget because it's all staff. So We'll be okay for 17, but in 18, we're going to have a big problem. Um, and then page 17 of 17 is just how we calculated the union percentages. And that is the budget. And unfortunately, um, failure to comply with the um, requirement for, for net school spending could result in the loss of Chapter 78. So, you know, we're cognizant of the of the town's concerns, um, but we certainly don't want to jeopardize the Chapter 78 coming to, to us as well. And well, and the other thing too is, I'm sure the town has budgeted for Charter and Choice out. Well, they won't be using that because there is no Charter out. So whatever they had budgeted. It, they can allocate that money. They could. Can you say what, the, what you said about Chapter 70 again? But 
Okay, in the letters that I gave to you, yep. what it says is failure to comply with this requirement may result in the loss of the Chapter 70 aid. Okay, with the max school spending. Right. Yeah. Okay. So basically, when you look at all of the schools in the district, every other school is over the minimum requirement, except for Sunderland. Sunderland was under. So you paid less than the base amount that the state set. Right. When you do that, you have to bring it up to what they say is the minimum contribution. So those are the two figures that Patty, Patty may mention of. And what they're saying is, if you don't, then we're not giving you our, the $800,000. So the only way we could think of doing that was to add it to the budget. But I know this percentage is a high percentage to swallow. I get that. So, question on the on that choice piece. So, uh, so what's that? It's page sixteen, right? Um, so the three eighty two. How much in, in so in FY sixteen we've we we have. 382 we have more. came from uh, a plot or was came from school choice. We allocated 382 out of school choice in 2016. What happened when we budgeted 2016 and we went over this um, the last meeting? They had incorrectly coded students in our Horizons program right. as school choice right. and gave us that increment. Right. So we budgeted to that amount. We put salaries on that so that we could keep our town requests yep. at the two and a half percent. But then what happened is in June, the situation got corrected. So we're, when we were expecting $291,000, we got $262,000. And maybe this would help. Let me pass this out to the school committee. Greg, you got a copy of this last night that I can give it, or Keith did. Um, and I'd be happy to pass out these copies to the audience as well. Oh, here's, here's some more. I'll wait till everybody. Did I have enough? Ben doesn't Did you need them then? Um, I have an extra. Yep. Oh, this is good. Oh, that's one for the audience. Okay. <laughs> Do we need any more for the audience? We're all set. There's one extra if you want. This can show you in real dollars the impact of, of charter and choice. I believe on your first page, this is the entire, yours are stapled the same way mine are. Um, this is the entire district, um, the elementary and the high school, <coughs> sending school choice and charter students. So you have the districts that the students are going to on the left, and then at the top you have the breakdown of all of the schools and where they're going in the totals. So as you can see, we're sending um, 139 students out. Now if you flip to the third page, just at the bottom, however, we're receiving 327 students in to our district. And as Patty mentioned, again, going to the first page, you only have eight students out for choice and zero students out for charter. And again, on the first page, if you look at the dollar figures, um, the totals on the right-hand side, you can see the amount that it costs <coughs> our district and where those checks are going. So for instance, if you look at Amherst, 45,000 to Amherst. Um, Hatfield, $169,000. So we are spending as a district $1,379,696 to pay for charter and choice going out. But what makes that line more interesting, <clears throat> if you look at the choice subtotal, we're sending 96 children out on choice 
for $622,756. But in charter, we're sending 43 kids out for $756,940. Much more. <laughs> <clears throat> So one of the problems that, that has happened, and you probably have been reading a lot about it um, at the state level, is Governor Baker is uh, proposing legislation to lift the charter, the cap on charter schools. Um, there is a lot of political pressure to do this in the urban areas in the state. Um, there are large waiting lists for uh, charter schools in the urban areas. Um, it impacts us differently, and what's happened is when they formed the charter school agreement, what was supposed to happen was the first year a district, so let's say Sunderland loses a student the first year. That first year, in order to adjust to that fewer students, you were supposed to get reimbursed by the state for the 100% cost of that student. So let's say 15,000. And you get 100% the first year and you get 25% for the five years following. Well, not only has the state not been paying 100% for the first year, they haven't done anything beyond the two years. Um, and I equate it to the Regional Transportation Agreement. When the impetus to set up regional schools was formed, we were supposed to have 100% reimbursement for transportation. We get anywhere from 60 to 40, I think one year we got 80. And, and basically what, what we're told is, well, the revenues aren't there. Okay, <laughs> I get that. We've all experienced revenue shortages, but it doesn't help the situation when we have to foot the bills. So, so this is a lot of information too to digest, but I think it gives you a sense of the impact of the um, volatility of budgets and what school districts all over are having to, to deal with. So I don't know if people have questions um, that we can try to answer. We are also going to be looking for some direction from school committee. Um, we don't have a public hearing until March, which is when you have to vote the budget. And, um, you know, as a school district and as a town, we have always been cognizant of the balance of the school needs and the town needs. Um, so. Um, well, I, um, I am a long way from any kind of expertise on the, the net school spending mm -hmm. um, and the foundation budget stuff. But um, I've been expecting um, the, the uh, you know, the growth of our student population to catch up with us. No, I didn't expect it to necessarily come from, mm -hmm. the, you know, from the state saying, hey, you know, you got to be spending more, but but I just the reality of we've got more kids in here. That means we meet, need more teachers and aides and everything else, and that's the you know lion's share of the budget or the people in the building. So um, that piece uh, makes sense to me, but it, you know obviously it it's um, challenging to say the least. Um, it is challenging. Um, I, I think everybody, you know, is, as I mentioned earlier, acutely aware of what happened when you cut um, programs that really shape and form the school. And I'm talking about the strings, the art. Um, it financially was devastating um, because you lost so many kids out in choice. Um, and it's taken seven years to get people back. So I don't think that's the answer. Um, I don't know the shape that the town's in financially, um, but I know that this is a huge increase. <coughs> so um, that's why we thought we'd get everybody involved in one room and see if we could hear different points of views and, and different ideas. 
You know, just to go back to that sheet for a second, I think what um, Superintendent Barrett is saying is, is very, um, you can see the trend. So if you look at our first page, at the elementary school, we only have eight students out. But if you turn the page, this is frontier only. And in the Sunderland column, you have the second most kids at the, at the seventh through 12 going out at 25. And two of them are seventh graders. So 23 were going out uh, previously. So you can see the trend was choosing charting out, but now we're keeping them. So eventually your, your numbers at the frontier will start reducing as, as well. So I think it, it, these numbers really signify um, the, what Marty was saying about the override failure and having to cut programs. And now that we have these programs back, we're keeping our community uh, students in our school, which is great. That is great. Um, well, we've got some uh, folks from the select board, and I, is the finance finance committee? You guys have a big surplus this year, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean. This, I mean, this is a different conversation that we've had in previous years. It's not. Um, just about what we want for the school. It's also what um, Desi is telling us, uh, as I understand it, we have to do for the school or have to, unless we want to risk, um, you know, potential repercussions. Uh, like well, a percentage the, 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 of that, you know, the entire increase is obviously not just due to that, but I believe it's just about 50,000. Um, do to that, David? Yeah, I'm just a general percentage of increase of work <coughs> represented by fixed costs like labor versus like buildings and maintenance. Is, I know it's buried in there and you can pull it all out, but it might be good for everybody to get an idea of what of the increases are, you know, contractual versus, you know, other types of things. Because when we look at, you know, you want to be able to break that down because you, obviously you try to go to the non-labor costs first mm -hmm. to look for any potential decreases. <coughs> I mean, just uh, touching on what I was saying, too. At our last meeting, it did feel like a different conversation. Patty handed around the sheet that had uh, the 7.88% increase, but then in the meeting said before she had had a chance to update it, that we were looking at more like 102 based on some, some choice information and some other things. So we kind of thought coming in here, it was gonna be this really big number and what do we do about it? Uh, and a lot of it was driven on contractual obligations. So it wasn't as if we were you know, coming in, well, we've gone on a shopping spree and, and we won't get town to pay for it. But it does change it that Desi is saying, if you don't meet this, then you're risking your, your chapter 70 funding, which uh, you know, I hear what Marty's saying too about uh, the state maybe not coming in and giving some relief where, uh, where it could. But it, it's not as if, oh, we know we need to spend this much for Chapter 70, so that's how much we're going to spend, and we're just going to spend it how we feel. It's like, that was before we knew that we were up against this Chapter 70 minimum, mm -hmm. the 10.2 the was already a number that we thought looked like we were. We would have to make painful choices if we didn't uh, stick to it. David, to answer your question real quickly, calculating, we're 70% personnel. 70% uh, of the local request is personnel. All the other funds is 100% personnel. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's what I was, uh, to the point of like, you know, we've been growing, uh, you know, and, and we need to add one more section and uh you know that um for a small school that's a lot of money um that's a big you know that's a big mm -hmm. that alone is a big you know percentage increase so uh that with the kind of usual stuff that, um, in terms of um contractual increases and so on so. well that one teacher and what the department of uh what um, the state is telling us accounts for a $100,000 increase right there. 
so. Well, we were, yeah, because we were talking about last time we had the, we were already at the limit on phys ed um, before contemplating that. And so that's, you know, again, um, increasing there and uh, AIDS, it makes sense. Right. That it, that, it, that would be the case. Um, you know, it's frustrating as we develop these budgets and, and I've, you know, I used to wonder when when did we ever have a good budget? And I think it was back in 2002. And I joke that I wish I had enjoyed it more because um, it's been downhill ever since. But we we have no new initiatives in this district, this budget in in this district or any other district. Um, and we're looking at maintaining uh, what we have, which I think is is very good. The only new thing I'm proposing is that we were the lowest district in Franklin County for our daily sub rate. So I don't even call that an initiative. It's, it's, it's meaning um, minimum wage requirements, which, which we have to do. So, um, so I understand the frustration on both sides, but I, you know, we, we haven't come in and say, we're proposing a new science or art or literacy program or um, anything else. This is maintaining what we have. Um, yeah. Maintaining what we have. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't see the order. I'll just Let's go in order, Dave and, and Scott. On, on page six, the increase in central office percentage um, that represents a 3.28% increase. What does that actually represent? <clears throat> Well, it's two things. If you look at um, the last page, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, and look at the um, you look at the percentages, um, the union 2014 Sunderland had 205 students, and in 15 they had 232 students. Is that so, just calculated based on that? Yes. Okay. But then, but then also the central office costs went up. Um, by we lost some grant funding for three positions, so that needed to be increased. Um, so it's a combination of the increased percentage and the increased funding for the salaries. The federal government um, has some new laws out uh, called Edgar about federal grants and, and who you can put on, on what grant. So two salaries had to be taken off a 94 142 grant. And the kindergarten grant is the funding part of our early childhood coordinator, um, who every day becomes more and more <laughs> invaluable with the influx of kids with needs. Um, so we had to pick up that piece of the salary as well. Scott. Yeah, yeah I appreciate the presentation, uh, uh, Patty and Marty. Um, I see the draft budget one request expense budgets developed request comes forward. The DESCC comes in and uh, there's a, a formulaic shift with an additional amount. But correct me if I'm wrong. On page five of 17, it's a debt plus of 49 and change. Mm -hmm. Correct. W were there expenses simply waiting in the wings to absorb that? Where does that money go? <laughs> if your expense budget is not developed on the DESC minimum formula, right. what happened? So what we did was one, we took a salary from the school choice budget, which is in which is in trouble. So we just moved the funding over, and then Mr. Barshevsky had had two requests that we couldn't fit into the original draft, and that was to get more one-on-one -on -one student devices, the Chromebooks, and his teachers' requests to upgrade their library closets. Uh, again, for more history and science genres, we are really low here, and, and we've got to build those closets up. So those were things that Mr. Barshevsky had requested and the teachers had requested, but we couldn't fit them in because we were thinking 7.88. So when we saw that we could add some money, we went back to the priorities. Those were the first two priorities that had gotten dropped. Okay, I, appreciate, I appreciate the methodology. How much of that ends up, because we're talking about a formulaic shift in the revenue stream, not necessarily the expense side. How much of that becomes a recurring expense for future years? Or does this- Just future? the salary. Okay. Thanks. 
one more thing. Outside of the shift from grant funding to uh, recurring revenue stream, uh, property tax base, uh, what's the overall increase at the um, uh, central offices uh, general expense minus the shift of the salaries off of the grants? I don't have that calculated, Scott, but so I can get I can get that yeah. for you. Thanks. And it's not to vilify the central office. It's just a question. <laughs> Well, oh, and when you say that, though, um, the salary posting for the superintendent um, was higher than we're at now, so I, I did budget that also at the highest, so there could be some savings there. The other thing I just wanted to mention about um, health insurance, even though it is a 6.8% increase in one year, it's the first time in five years that we've had any increase. So um, we have to take that into consideration in the past five years our increase um, has gone up less than 10 percent that is unheard of most some people get hit 10 percent a year so we have been very successful uh, with the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust If I could, I mean, school committee members live in the community. Yeah. Um, you're the guys that are going to have to face people at town meeting and support a 10% 10, 10 increase in budget. Um, and, and roughly speaking, town of, of Sunderland, 67, 68% of our budget goes to education. You guys are about, elementary, Sunderland elementary is about half of that. So you probably got 30, about 32, 33 percent of our total town budget. So somehow, somehow, um, if you look at our excess levy capacity, what our two and a half percent increase, um, the the number that you put forward is says that every basically every other department have to go backwards. So somehow you have to look at that budget. We have to talk to the neighbors, people that you know and we're going to have to justify the budget. I will say the one thing what we have to understand, because unfortunately we've done this before, um, when they talk about the money that's being spent or what our minimum contribution, the reason our number is high, we think it's high, relatively high, is because Sunderland has in the past paid more than we were supposed to. So the, the more you pay, the more it actually counts against you. And I don't understand how that ever works in the formula. And that's what the assistant director of whatever told us one time, how, when they worked the formulas. So I don't quite understand. We, we showed an ability to pay. So I, I, I would, it'd be interesting if we could take some of the numbers and actually go to uh, our state legislators and start the process of talking to them not that one of them's a vice chairman of the Ways and, Commi Ways and Means Committee and the other one's a president of the Senate, and ask them about the formulas and how they're developed, about what minimum contribution actually met means. And we actually have had schools near us, and I think Hopkins was one, or Hadley was one, that was actually at or below the minimum contribution. I mean, it's Hopkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it is a very, in it is a very interesting it's uh, a target. So some people yeah. are below. So, yep. so what they're trying to do is get everybody to pay the same percentage based on your 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 property and your and your income level. Yeah, there's and, a lot of stuff that's involved with that. Plus it's plus it depends on how much you paid before. Well, it's it's not so much before. It's it, it's just that some people so when in 1993 when education reform, they wanted everybody to to focus on getting everybody up to spending the same amount, okay? Yeah. Now they're focused on everybody pay their fair share. 
So yeah. that's, and that's the difference in the chapter 70 versus what the towns should pay. And yes, uh, on, so everybody is at foundation budget right now. Every, every community is, they've achieved that. Everybody is at net required net school spending. How it's allocated between the chapter 70 and the town requirement, everybody is different. Some people are above, some people are below. That's why they do the piece where you're supposed to pay this and you take the lower of the two numbers. Yeah. So yes, your Sunderland is over and there's quite a few communities that are under. Yeah. And they're focusing more on getting the unders up than they are the overs down. And there was a plan to do this over five years, but it got scrapped be because of the, the what right. happened with the state and, and their funding. Yeah, and, and we've seen it. We, we've seen that we, and we've had it happen before. And I think all of our, Marty, you've been here long mm -hmm. enough, you've seen it happen through every one of our towns and the districts had that same thing. So like one year, everybody gets a slap in the face. It's mm -hmm. like, and because you have to meet the fun, fundamental. But the, but the difference as I see it is that our former town administrator went to a town um, and not too far from here, an hour, an hour away. And when I talked to her and asked what's her biggest thing, it says, oh, it's education. And it says, what do you mean? Well, it's 50% of their budget. And I'm going, mm. it's interesting because our education is almost 70% mm. of our budget. So it's how you, so, so for us, education is a huge portion of our budget. Um, and, and when you get further east, the education percentage goes down. Cape is mm -hmm. like us. Cape, Cape is very dependent on, you know, you have a lot of school costs on, on their budgets. But when you go further east, it seems like there's less impact on the budget by education. And so I don't think, they try to treat everybody the same, but we're not all the same. We all have different, we all have different requirements. I agree with everything you've said, Tom. I know. Yeah. And we, 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 and, and, and I don't, and we, and we, 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 we try to make a formula that fits everybody. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that the town side sits over here and the school side sits over there and, and we butt heads and butt heads mm -hmm. and butt heads and, and it's us fighting on, on the, on the, on the, on this very small level. And the changes really have to happen way above us. Mm -hmm. There has to be an appreciation of what that everybody isn't the same. All right. But Tom, if you look at page four of seventeen, <clears throat> overall your your minimum contribution has gone down twenty thousand six hundred seven. Absolutely. Not a lot, but it's down from FY sixteen. And and you thought and you would think it would go down because at one point we had lost um, students and and all the calculations. One and, different. Yeah. You, we were three twenty five and sixteen, we're at three twenty six and seventeen. Yeah. So so I mean it, it's hard. I mean what, I, what I'm saying is, it's, it's, I mean, it's very difficult for us to sit here and, and argue with you guys. I mean, you guys, you, I, yeah, I don't think there's anybody on the school committee or in the administration or the principal that probably was relishing to bring that number to the town today. No, no one was, I'm sure Marty. That's why I, when I shook your hand, I said, I hope you shake it after. And, I, and I, you know, what did I tell you? So I, so I shook your hand last year, I'll shake your hand this year. And because I know it's a lot of it's, it's not about, not about you. I would question, I mean, right now we have, when you figure the numbers, the contribution numbers, stuff like that, you know, we, we're getting students now that go into Smith Vocational. Well, we have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. So does that, I mean, and you took the, the contributions that we had to um, Franklin Tech. Frontier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are all on there. Why? Why shouldn't that student be or students be included as well? We're paying. I mean, it's the same thing. That the kid is going out, and I also agree with you on charter schools, charter and choice. Um, I would say I would hope um, that we don't run into that we don't replicate the problem that developed in other local schools is where we try to solve our problem by bringing choice students in at $5,000 a, a pop. Um, I personally don't think that's, and, and this goes back to uh, December 17th, 25, when I made the statement back there. I don't want to see us moving after kids and looking at kids as a dollar sign. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I hate to bring, I see someone up, and, and you look at the numbers and you have 17, some kids have classes have a 17 or 18 students but 
if you bring those up to 2021 by school choice, are, what are we really doing? Mm -hmm. I don't think well, we're helping us. We, this year we have 40 incoming <coughs> students, and we 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 can't we, we have no room to take school choice students without having to add a another teacher, which we're not going to do. And we only good. fill to what we have. So, it like right now, it looks like possibly the only place we would have room is in fourth grade. And like and, I, I hope we don't add. And again, and my Tom, thing is don't try to solve the problem by going to school choice. Yeah, absolutely, I, mean, I agree with you. The steps that we've been taking with school choice. We've been looking to cap grades K through two at 18 students and grades three through six at 20 students. The grade levels where um, the numbers are higher than that um, are with in-town residents. Uh, like we said earlier, it's a very transient community. Since this school year has started, um, we have had, Ellen, how many in sixth grade? Well, how many new in-town students? Uh, four, maybe? Yeah, four. Since, since September, we've had four students move into town um, added to our sixth grade class. So we're, it seems like almost on a bi-weekly basis, we're having kids yeah. knocking on our door. And that's, you know, something that we, we can't control. Absolutely. And again, I, it, it's, I mean, you guys are going to have to look at the budget. I mean, and you got to feel comfortable with the number. And sometimes it's a it's a hard thing, um, and 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 basically, you guys go to eight to ten meetings a year, and your next three meetings are going to be terrible. But that's what we do. Um, yeah, I think uh, you know, in terms of having those conversations, I mean, you know, that <laughs> if there's you know if there's open ears for the conversation, which I think there are a lot of them, and then there are some that aren't, but. You know, the, the one where where it's you know the, the there are the open ears to the conversation. I mean, the uh, again. I mean, I, I I'm pretty sure I said it last year in our deliberations. I was surprised at, that we weren't looking at a larger increase last year. Just <coughs> from watching that the enrollment numbers go go up and up, and um, you know, and 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 in some part. Um, you know, sixth grade is, is from, you know perhaps living with some of the you know some of what's happened where where we just we only have the one section in in that sixth grade this year even though it's 29 students now um, so I mean I just don't I mean from from I think it uh, you know the bottom was around 170 um, when I was and it was while well, I was on the school committee um, and now we're at pushing around Two, three, two, what two is thirty. Two thirty-two. So that's 33. you know, total kids. Uh, over you know over a third increase um, in the in the stu in the kid population. So um, and you know our budget down at that minimum, which was a, at a time where we were really uh, you know fighting you know uh, with just to hold on to programs. Um, and didn't have everything we wanted, you know, was it right around, I think the town appropriation was around 2 million, maybe it was, I forget that year, uh, that low year where it was, but around two. And this is two, three, seven, six. So the numbers don't, in that regard, they don't surprise me. It's just, but it's a, in one year, it's a big increase when the school is a big part of the, mm -hmm. like you said, such a big part of the town budget, so it makes that change. And we've had um, the numbers increase, our in-town residents move into Sunderland um, at every single grade level. Take a second grade for example. When the current second grade class left first grade in June, we had 31 students. Since that time, we've had nine families move into town, nine additional second grade students added to that group none of which are, are school choice. I think the other thing that, um, mm. that I think it's important for the town to understand, and we had a presentation for the school committee last uh, meeting, is that our early childhood program is blowing up. We're getting more and more kids with more and more needs, and we have to service them from three or 2.9 years of age to 22. And this isn't happening just in Sunderland. This is happening in all four of our communities. 
So we need to look at how we're going to expand and how we're, how we're going to um, be able to service these children uh, in district because we absolutely don't want them going out of district. And I think you're going to have to start having, you have to go back to have that regionalization to K through 12 again. K through 6. Well, or K through 6 even. But you have, at some point, you may have to have that conversation because you're exactly right. As soon as we start have, as soon as we start sending children outside a district, that's when the bills go from 20000 to Forty or fifty thousand well, or more. Well, it's worse than that. Yeah. The right. children that we're seeing with the level of autism, the May Center would be their placement, and next year the tuition for one student is a hundred and eight thousand dollars. That was like halfway there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but but again, and and that and that and like it's happened not just in our town, but it's happened in all four towns. So the four towns, this is something that the four towns are going to have to work on. Mm -hmm. We don't have one happy budget this year in any town. Um, it is the year of unhappy budgets. Uh, last year we were pretty much at level funding or um, I think we had... Well, we, we were trying to, you know, we were trying to keep to the town's wishes of the, you know, two and a half percent. Right, and, right. and we've been, honestly, since I've been here, we've been, you know, we've been, this is my fourth budget. And this, is, we've been trying to keep it under three percent. We can only hold that for so long because most of us, most of our costs are people, and we need the people. And school school choice aside, but for for our students with special needs, they are our students. They are our residents in our towns, and we do not want them to go to other communities. It's we we want to provide them with the best educational experience possible in their hometown, in their hometown school. And, and I really think we're doing that. And our, our teachers work extremely hard and I'm um, forever grateful um, for the effort they put forth on a daily basis. And um, the amount of services that our teachers and staff are providing these students who otherwise would be going out of district is, is incredible. And, and they're doing a great job. I am not anticipating any major changes between now and the time that we <coughs> go before uh, the town on the 22nd, Second. Um, nor when we meet again for our regular school committee meeting. On the 23rd. On the 23rd, <laughs> the very next day. Um, but we do have until March 16th, something like that, for our, our public hearing. But I don't think we have a lot out, out there. A contract may be settled, uh, a salary may be settled. That might be a more firm figure. I don't think we have any other unknowns out there right now. The, the only other unknown, which is happening in a couple other districts, but so far not here, is that we've had some um, move-ins uh, of students who already have out-of-district placements. So that is always the wild card um, because we have to honor the IEP they come with. I, I, when you were going over your choice and charter stuff, I was doing a little calculation on the side too and sort of on the lines of stuff that we can't control. But um, I noticed that it's costing us, well, you've got a cost of 10297 per person for the foundation budget per student. Mm -hmm. And we're spending six thousand four hundred and eighty-seven oh four per pupil for choice, but we're spending seventeen thousand six hundred and three point two five per student for charter. For charter. Yeah. And as we sit here and struggle with this, I notice that there are no presentations by any of the charter schools on their budgetary practices. You're very astute because and, we, well, we have said that. We all have to stand up before our towns, and including paying, Franklin County. Yep. All of, all of yep. the taxpayers here are paying this money with essentially no representation or accountability. That's right. At least in terms yeah. of what we get from you know from you guys compared yeah, to I don't see any any uh, charter schools. So we keep that in mind as we're going around mm -hmm. trying to lift caps without any looking at what's going on there. That's an interesting set of figures. And the formula for calculating the cost per charter is complicated because it's our poor people cost 
It's what it costs yeah. them and some other magic number. The Their state facility has, fee, which drives me nuts. Um, that they come up with. And so it is usually anywhere between sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars for a charter student. Right. You know, going out. Um, I think Four Rivers is the cheapest of the three. That yeah. are. Um, I think the performing arts is like eighteen four thirty two. And the immersion was like 18232, and, and the Four Rivers, I think, is 17 something. And it, it just kind of hangs over there because if we're going to do things to, you know, if they're setting them up to compete with us to make us better, mm -hmm. here we are with these increased costs without adding any new programs. So we have to keep all of that in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm fine with choice. You know, I believe everybody should have choice, but it's how they fund that choice Correct. that that it's that it's killing us. Because the school choice, if this if school choice was an issue that affected Eastern Mass, you can bet your bottom line we'd be getting a lot more than five thousand dollars, which is what they set the right. tuition at, at in the inception of the program. But it doesn't happen in the eastern part of the state, and we do not have the legislative clout to get that money. I mean, and I, I was just saying today, when you look at this month, when you look at these numbers on our receiving on page three of three, Gil Montague, we're taking 103 of their students, 103 students from Gil Montague. That's got to be a pretty hefty percentage of their population. I think personally. You know, just to get on my soapbox a little bit, but um, that the proliferation of charter schools is an attempt to destroy public education. I truly believe that, <coughs> and they're doing it. If we are a, a very good, fine school district, um, we have one to three ratio of students wanting to come here who are going out. We achieve great things. We have 90% of our kids are going off to college. We have, um, you know, we are considered in the Valley a very desirable school district. And if charter and choice can impact a very good school district in the profound way that it has, think about how it's impacting other school districts that don't have the, um, Nash or, or, you know, the reputation that our school district has. And I think it's slowly, slowly chipping away at public education. So, you know, we've been very active on the superintendent's level trying to um, meet with Senator Rosenberg and Kulik. Um, they've listened. I don't know what the impact of everyone's statements and concerns will be. Um, but I also know they're under great political pressure in Boston. So. Has any of the superintendents discussed litigation? I don't know if they have. Um, we have Bill Deal as director of the collaborative, who's been acting as our kind of liaison to be able to go out. I don't know if they've actually discussed litigation. Because I, I just want, I, I'm actually just very frustrated looking at the state basically not paying their portion of the bills and then telling us that we have to pay more. Right, right. So <laughs> is it, is it yeah. by law? Or is it like a gentleman's agreement that the state would cover the regional transportation? Because they're not covering that. And now they're not covering the charter school uh, exiting for right. it. So they have all these, and I, are they codified? Are they, is it in law or are they, well, that, I think, that's where I would question. I think they did make some inroads with the regional transportation because um, MARS, uh, the Massachusetts Association of Regional Schools. School Districts, whatever they are, um, they actually did bring suit last year mm -hmm. with the regional transportation because the law basically reads that unless you're cutting Chapter 70, you can't cut the regional But they still did not give us 100%. They didn't, but they at least were put on notice, so. can't do it anymore. So I don't know how much, how much political clout that will hold. I mean, it's one thing to be told you can't do something, and it's another thing to follow through and do what you're supposed to do. I guess so. when you're the governor, you can do anything. Well, <laughs> we, we had uh, state, the uh, Speaker of the House, Thomas DeLeo, come out one time. He was from Boston. And if you're in Boston, you have no idea what regional transportation's about. 
so in so for them they know one thing and you get look at the number of representatives in Boston mm -hmm. and all of Franklin County we may have one and a half reps now between Steve Kulik and Paul Mark I mean there's not a lot of us mm -hmm. we have <clears throat> but they had no idea what school transportation was because their kids either take the MBTA some are bust a lot of them walk um, and they have no idea so try try trying to do anything with that is very, very difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. Marty, and you're not gonna do a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And, and that's, if that's frustrating to us. I, I would say on the school choice and the um, um, charter schools, I, I can, I can under, see, I, 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 don't, I don't understand why you have school choice and charter schools. I could understand one or the other. I understand kids learn differently. Um, you know, I, I know, you know, some kid would go to a, a charter school because they offer a different way of teaching that may, we may not be familiar with. I, I guess I can accept that. Um, but I can see having one, but having both school choice and charter does not necessarily make see, sense to see, me. See, I disagree with you, Tom, because <clears throat> the premise of the charter schools, when they founded it, was to <clears throat> provide something that a regular school, regular public school couldn't offer. So that's why I buy the Chinese immersion. And the performing uh, and arts. And the performing arts, I buy that. Yeah. But if you have a program like Four Rivers that replicates a college preparatory program like we have, I think that violates the premise of that charter. And I don't know why they were allowed to be formed. Well, we agree though. You know, I, oh, we yes, do agree. we do agree. Of course, be, yeah. and, and because you're, you're right. <laughs> it, and we, we, we agree on the fact that that if you're offering a school, like the greatest thing, we, one of the conversations we had many years ago was that Frontier budget was about restoring Frontier's drama mm -hmm. and instruments. Mm -hmm. That's when the PVPA was first coming back. And I would think if you, you just think of all the kids that stayed at Frontier that may have not wanted to go, but they, they liked that drama mm -hmm. portion. I think that's, I thought, so the PVPA forced Frontier in a way to bring back the mm -hmm. drama, and mm -hmm. and I thought that was a wonderful thing. It, it so yeah, you're you're kind of competing, and I don't think you guys have a problem competing, but you're right. When you lose mm -hmm. students to a, 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 a basically doing the same thing, that's tough. Right, it is and, tough. And it, just like mm -hmm. to me, it's hard when you have a, a student from Sunderland School Choice into Whiteley. Well, they're basically the same. Um, but, and, well, but I mean, everybody learns differently. I, I, I don't know. And that sometimes well, that's a matter of convenience. And <coughs> it, it, it probably is. I, I just, it, it's to me, it, it's I did try to one, stop it, but one they or told the me other, but not both. <laughs> both of them, both, to me, both, it doesn't make sense to have both of them. Well, you know, and aside from, you know, how one's regulated versus the other, and then, and the funding, I mean, if we, shut down our education, <laughs> our schools here and said, hey, you're all going to go to the charter schools. Uh, the town couldn't afford it. The town, <laughs> we, we, it, we couldn't pay for it. Right, right. Um, so, uh, so that's what I'm saying. So. Even though our, our budget is going up, you're going to have savings in your charter and choice sending tuition accounts. Um, you, you're going to be getting some money in for your homeless transportation. That, so there'll be that little bit. And, we're trying. You'll be getting a fuel uh, reimbursement for the bus contract. So. Well, next year the gas companies, will, the oil companies, will be paying us to buy their stuff, so we'll save money yeah. in that too. So <laughs> we're doing our share to get. You always ask me for revenue stream. I'm getting some. I know. Agreed. Agreed. So we don't have to take any votes tonight. This was really just the purpose was informational to share some ideas. It's a lot of information. I know, I'm hoping that people will go home and, and um, read them thoroughly and, and come prepared for our next meeting with questions or ideas. Um, and I agree with Tom or Dave, whoever said, um, you know, talk to your neighbors because this impacts people's pocketbooks. And uh, I'll try to take my own advice that I'm about to give, which is, uh, um, to get you know to as many of the um, upcoming budget meetings, town budget meetings, um, you know where you know try to get informed of that schedule and um, you know to have the conversations with 
other department heads and people in the town about, you know, what we're dealing with, what they're dealing with, and uh, how we can try to, mm -hmm. you know, figure it out together. And on that same vein, but in another note, we it might be good to tell the public that on the 22nd and the 23rd, at 4.30 to 5.30 at the Frontier Library, we will be having a meet and greet with the two finalist candidates for our, our new superintendent position. I was supposed to do that robocall today. I will do that robocall that, tomorrow. That information is, um, should be posted on the school it websites. It is on the school websites. Yeah. It's also on the district but website. But I figure, hey, we've got a TV, TV, TV everyone out in TV land. <laughs> um, are there any other questions or comments from Committee or members, public. No, thanks. Thank you for coming. It, it, it was the idea to try to get uh, in front of this, or, you know, earlier rather than later, and uh, appreciate the good turnout. And um, with that said, I will entertain an, a motion to adjourn. Yes. <laughs> Any, Okay. Here, Ethan. Yep, yeah, Michelle, second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, Tom. <laughs>